Sometimes, Goran can't believe his eyes. I can't believe they've ruined so much so quickly. They've done all this in less than a year. Eastern Serbia has large gold and copper deposits. Mines are springing up at lightning speed. The builders are Chinese firms, and they have brought their labor forces with them. Serbia is the Balkan state closest to China, and China has big plans for it. is one of Europe's biggest copper mines, 250 kilometers southeast of Belgrade. China acquired it in 2018. Goran Yakovlevich lives here, in one of the most polluted places in all of Serbia. For years, he has watched his hometown be sold off. He complains that the Serbian state has imposed no regulations on the new owners, and there is far too little information. We've just rolled over and left everything to them. It's like Eastern Serbia has somehow been sacrificed. I don't know if it's because of Chinese influence in international organizations, or because they give us cheap loans for new highways. Driving around the mine, the scale on which China is building here becomes clear. The gold and copper are to be extracted as quickly as possible. Gigantic new sites are being developed and access roads built, all with imported labor. After their shift, the workers return to their lodgings. Hello. The mood seems good. No one speaks English. You working here? <laughs> English, someone. English. No, English. Locals watch the expansion with suspicion, expecting worse to come. At first, they're only mining the surface layer. Underneath, deeper in the ground, there is a gigantic area, five to six kilometers across that stretches all the way to bore. When they finish mining the surface in about 10 years, they will continue deeper underground and reach the town. Then Bohr and its people will have nothing left. Goran is in contact with the residents around the mine. They are all in danger. Southeast Europe has welcomed Chinese investment. Serbia is a literal gold mine for major new infrastructure projects. The country is feverishly expanding its rail and road networks. Half of all projects have gone to China. In return, China will get the long-awaited connection to Western Europe from the Greek port of Piraeus. Serbia has become China's bridge to Europe, symbolized by the Pupin Bridge. At 1,500 meters long and one of the most important Danube crossings in Belgrade, it was the first Chinese project here built by Chinese firms with Chinese funds. China's Serbian policy is built on the principle of modern infrastructure. Investments and loans worth billions in exchange for influence and access to Europe. Another prestige project is the high-speed rail line between Budapest and Belgrade. A joint venture by Serbia, China and Russia, a Chinese bank is financing the lion's share of the more than 2 billion euro project. China has a strong interest in an effective Balkan rail network. The capital, Belgrade, is the investment hotspot.
Construction will soon begin on a subway system financed and built by China. Chinese companies will also build a new sewage treatment plant for the Serbian capital, an estimated investment of almost 10 billion euros. China is active in commercial enterprise. A recent Chinese investment is an automotive factory in northern Serbia, which will also produce parts for German companies. Its launch in the spring of 2023 was virtually a state ceremony. President Aleksandr Vucic sees Chinese involvement in his country as a great opportunity. It's a good partner of Serbia. We have had so far a very regular relationship and uh, they've been investing, in, investing hugely into our steel mill and our copper mine and uh, it was an open, transparent, tender procedure for that copper mine. And none of you companies have applied for that. And uh, it was pretty much the same case with the steel mill, and they saved more than 5,000 people's job in a very important city like Smederevo here. And of course, they were doing together with us many infrastructural projects, but uh, still by far the biggest investor in Serbia is Germany. The new Chinese cultural center in Belgrade symbolizes the Serb-Chinese relations. The Chinese embassy once stood here, but it was destroyed by NATO bombs during the Kosovo War. The new modern building is a testament to the bonds between the two countries. Liu Yu works for the Chinese State Railway Corporation in Belgrade, which supports these good relations. He makes good money as a department head. Uh, I like uh, the Mercedes, uh, but uh, my wife also like uh, BMW. Liu is on his way to an appointment with a Serbian business partner. A lot of money is at stake. Liu believes China's presence here makes Serbians wealthy. Chinese investment has made it easier for Serbians to find work and earn more. So I think it's a win-win situation for everyone involved. Leo has an unusual hobby, establishing contact between Serbian and Chinese firms. So far, it is voluntary in his spare time, but one day he hopes to earn from it. Leo is a kind of private lobbyist for China. He arrives at Belt, a Serbian company outside Belgrade. Leo wants to persuade the owner to make new deals with his Chinese clients. Hello, how are you? Hi, fine, thanks. Come in. Leo wants to ensure that ordered shipments will arrive on time. Mm -hmm. Look, I promised you there would be no supply bottlenecks. Mm -hmm. We're still well on track, all on schedule. We should finish as quickly as possible so there aren't any work stoppages. I'm also here to ask about the prices, because there have been some wild fluctuations. The partners would like more certainty about this. The war in Ukraine has stressed the economic situation. Liu is trying to talk the Serbian businessman down. Only then will the Chinese agree. Their price expectations are still far apart.
The first Chinese who immigrated permanently to Serbia in the late 1990s started doing business here, in Block 70, the market. It is a maze of more than 300 stores and stalls. In the middle of the market, Kit and his Serbian partner Jovana run a small art school for Chinese children. Yes. What about this part here? I want to finish painting the tree first. Kit is a child of immigrants. His parents came to Serbia for economic reasons. When we first came here, everyone assumed that if you were Chinese, you sold fast food or socks. Now the Chinese here live relatively well. Not all, but if they started early and have been in business for some time, they're doing really well. You can tell by their cars and houses and the private schools their children attend, which can cost $20,000 or euros per year. Kit, too, wants to earn a good living. He has several jobs and often works well into the night. The little art school is a side job. A large part of his income comes from marketing for Chinese firms and restaurants. The Chinese trust more in other Chinese and prefer to work with them whenever they can. Not only in social media marketing, but generally. They would rather bring someone over from China, for example as a cook, and pay twice what they would for a local cook who's just as good. I guess it's part of the Chinese mentality. We trust ourselves the most. <laughs> He says he often works until three in the morning, which his parents found reassuring. But now he wants to change, to become part of Serbian society, a dream which could come true within the next few days. A few meters away, Weya Chen is off today. The Chinese 25-year-old is showing her Serbian friend Sanya around the market. Everything is new and exotic to Sanya. Weya knows almost every shop in Block 70. She wants to show Sanya where she spent her childhood. To do so, they have to enter a cordoned off section of the market that was the scene of a fire a few years ago. Entry is forbidden, but the area is not secured. Weya hasn't been there in years. Uh, so this was my parents' shop. This one is 140. Weya's parents had a shoe store here. It's really heartbreaking. And uh, I just feel like all my memories have burned with the shop, with everything. And my uncle from last night, uh, his shop is over there, upstairs. We were also neighbors. Yeah, so it's all burned. Weya's father died and her mother has moved back to China. Weya has decided to stay and is now on her own. The country is in a gold rush fever. Building is happening everywhere, and many of the large construction sites are in Chinese hands. Serbia is part of the new Silk Road, one of the world's largest infrastructure projects. It will link the Chinese and European markets. These workers are building 40 kilometers of a new highway section. They are more talkative. How many days working? 
Three years. Three years. Three years in Serbia? Yes, in Serbia. Okay. Hard work or good work? Yes, it's a high level of Serbia. It's mm -hmm. good working. And here is work and where, where you live? Where ah. do you live? Well, live? Living, sleeping? Oh, uh, over there. Over there. <laughs> Here, too, the Chinese corporate policy is clearly evident. They bring their own workers, who earn 1,200 euros per month, significantly higher than the Serbian average. They are paid to be reliable and fast. Most of the Chinese workforce lives in shared barracks, which we are not allowed to film. Not at all? No, no, Just no. to show how you, how you live here, how you work? No, 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 sorry. No camera? No, 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 sorry, 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 stop. Permanent immigrants live in the apartment blocks around the market. The Chinese have always found Serbia attractive, not least because of their shared communist past. And the community is growing. Weya lives here too, with uh, her cat. Well, her name is Pijo, but it literally means uh, beer. Uh -huh. Yeah, so because I love drinking beers, that's why her name is Beer. As an office worker and translator for a Chinese firm, she earns enough to afford a middle-class lifestyle, a pet, and a BMW. The only thing she sometimes misses is her mother. Why aren't you working today? Because it's the weekend, Mom. Oh, I completely forgot. Hi, Pichu. It's me, your grandma. Why are you ignoring me? <laughs> Wea contacts her family using Chinese software. We don't use Google, we don't use Facebook or Instagram, these applications. But we do have our uh, own applications. And if you want to uh, contact with your um, foreign friends, it's just like impossible that you can do it. Maybe only through emails. But it's, uh, can you understand why it's not allowed? Uh, not really. Because <laughs> no one explained that to us. It's just like it's forbidden. But she never felt restricted in China. You basically can do everything in China. Probably it's not a, a really um, free to talk too much about politics in China. But the thing is, we don't really talk about politics because we don't, the party, we just, we trust our government and we just don't talk about it. So it's not like uh, it's forbidden and we really wanted to talk about it, but it's forbidden. It's something that we never talk about. Weya claims, for example, not to know about the war in Ukraine. Perhaps her non-political stance explains why she seems to have no problem with surveillance. I felt safer mm -hmm. in China because we have cameras everywhere and uh, uh, we basically, it's just, we don't have homeless people, we don't have, uh, we don't have a lot of crimes going on in China, so it's really, really safe to go out in China at any time. Even if we don't have these cameras, we are like uh, the government or I don't know who, but everybody's watching us, even if we don't have the camera because uh, we have our cell phone, we have our computer. They can look through our personal data as very easily. So uh, I think the camera that they put on the road, it's protecting us. In the last few years, more cameras have been showing up in Belgrade, too. 8,000 are planned to be installed. Danilo Krivokopic chairs an NGO for data protection. He is raising awareness about the cameras. What does it say? 
He says, uh, don't record my face with this camera. The cameras are produced by the Chinese firm Huawei. Danilo's problem is that they can be upgraded with software, also Chinese, with facial recognition. This is a pla place where people gather. This is where people meet when they are uh, trying to go out in the city, but this is also where people protest. And here you can see four out of 18 cameras uh, that are placed around the square. So this means that the whole square is completely covered with this type of cameras. During a protest, authorities can learn who is critical of the government. Belgrade is the first European city where smart cameras are widespread. Danilo's organization has started a campaign to pressure the Serbian government to ban the use of this technology. People just need to feel that somebody is watching them. This is this is the only thing uh, that is important. And when they uh, feel that somebody will know what they're doing, with whom they're meeting. If they're going to protest, they're going to change their behavior. And I think, I believe this is very dangerous for a democratic society. Chinese companies are already at the forefront in Serbia when it comes to digital infrastructure, such as the 5G network. Is Serbia a testing ground for Chinese surveillance technology? Critics warn of excessive influence. But no one in business seems worried. The orientation toward China is strategic. So are the close ties with Russia, also a Slavic country. But Serbia also sees itself as committed to the European Union. What looks from the outside like a seesaw policy is, from a Serbian viewpoint, just politics. The nearly 7 million strong country in the middle of the Balkan Peninsula sees itself as non-aligned, independent, and free in its foreign policy and choice of business partners. A path successfully trodden by the communist former Yugoslavia. The former Serbian and Yugoslavian royal residence in the center of Belgrade symbolizes this continuity. It is now the official residence of the President of the Republic, an office held since 2017 by Aleksandar Vucic, the former Minister of Information under Slobodan Milosevic and later Prime Minister, governs the country unchallenged. At the start of the COVID pandemic, he showed he's got options. Chinese flagged planes landed at Belgrade Airport, embarrassing the EU. China was the first to deliver masks and vaccines. Serbian-Chinese vaccine diplomacy. In military terms too, Serbia sees no need to commit. The government bought an air defense system from China as a signal to the West. Its position on the Russian war in Ukraine is also non-committal. While Serbia condemns Russia at the UN, Aleksandr Fucic does not sign off on sanctions. The head of state heeds no criticism for taking this path. Speaking about Russians, it was not me that was going to Moscow. It was many EU leaders that went to Moscow since war started. But they didn't say anything to anyone. Why do you believe that some EU leaders, they have their right to do whatever they want and that we should not act as an independent state? The West is watching Serbia's back and forth policy with increasing concern.
The European Parliament is alarmed that China is exploiting Serbia's ailing infrastructure and offering modernization and generous loans. The fear in Strasbourg is that Serbia is helping China to buy into and establish itself in Europe on a large scale. Serbia has been an official candidate for EU membership for years, so its actions are seen as particularly problematic. The Ukraine war is not just a local event between two countries, but is likely to pose the fundamental question, are you on the side of democracy or of autocracies and dictatorships? Russia is clearly identifiable as a dictatorship, and China is going in this direction with President Xi's third term. And so for Serbia, the fundamental question arises, on which side do we stand? Do we want to go into the future with Russia or China? Do we expect more there? Or do we want to go toward Europe, that is, toward the free world and democracy? No one can take this decision away from the Serbs. They have to make it themselves, but it cannot be postponed much longer. Back to the Serbian company in Belgrade. Liu Yu is mainly interested in developing his business. How has it gone for him? Has he been able to convince the Serbian businessman to expand his business with the Chinese? I think this is only the beginning of our cooperation when we try to uh, make good on all of our promises, and we did. So we hope to, to increase the percentages in the following months and years. They seem to have made a deal. Leo has launched seven such partnerships so far. He needs 20 before he can start charging for his services and earn from them. On the way back, Leo begins to relax. Mr. Dushan don't want to put price too low. So I talk with him in this case. Uh, we can find uh, some middle price, price. And uh, I talk with the Chinese company to give um, uh, the more, little more price. And uh, Mr. Dushan is uh, give the price is a uh, little down. I'm happy for that. So happy to make uh, some uh, cooperation, Chinese company with the Serbian company. lives with his Chinese wife in a two-bedroom apartment. She is shy and doesn't want to be filmed. He shows us his wedding photos. They have both gone through hard times. After spending the pandemic apart, him in Serbia and her in China, they finally celebrated their wedding. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, uh, tradition Chinese. But that wasn't enough for his wife. My wife is uh, have a dream uh, married to in a church. So the couple was baptized Orthodox. <laughs> Liu is pragmatic, but his sympathies are with his homeland. The big topic on Chinese television tonight is the China-Taiwan conflict and the planned visit by a U.S. Democrat. The problem arises when a third party interferes, in this case the U.S., which pursues its own interests and sets the brothers against each other. Even selling weapons to the younger brother and making money from this dispute. Leo is convinced there will be no escalation or war. But on the news we see warships, aircraft carriers, fighter planes taking off, all for show. China just wants to show that we are strong enough and can hold our own in a war. We're showing our muscles, showing that we're strong, that's all. 
Ništa drugo. <laughs> Leo feels happy in Serbia and wants to stay. He is driven to keep business running and it does. China is now at the top of its economic game, he says with pride. But the boom China is bringing to Serbia comes at a price. The Balkan nation owes China some 8 billion euros, about a quarter of the country's total debt. China is poised to become the largest foreign creditor in the entire Western Balkans. This is especially true for Serbia. No one knows what will happen if Serbia can no longer service its debts. Could China use this scenario to demand long-term access to Serbian territory? <laughs> European parliamentarians have long been warning about growing Chinese influence and about potential environmental damage by Chinese-run industrial companies. Serbia is often suspected of having low environmental standards, lax controls, and a lack of transparency. Many EU parliamentarians are not convinced that Serbia is clearly committed to Europe. The country has been a membership candidate since 2012, the concern is that if Serbia becomes an EU member state, China could influence European policy through the back door. One demand is that if Serbia really wants to join the EU, it must become less dependent on China. The Grundsatzfrage, wer steht auf der Seite von Demokratie und Rechtsstaat? We cannot postpone for much longer the fundamental question of who is on the side of democracy and the rule of law. We must decide within months or a few years at most. And Serbia also has to make its decision. If we are serious about the prospect of enlargement, then Europe must also be able to reform. China is buying into Serbia with the view of it becoming a member of the EU and thus being in the position to block European foreign policy toward China. That must not happen. Our foreign policy must move away from one country being able to stop and block the entire European Union. If we can do that, then enlargement steps like Serbia will also become easier for us Europeans. Belgrade feels it is being treated unfairly and recalls the German Chancellor's journey to China with a trade delegation. Why should Germany have the right to do business with China, but not Serbia? The question of where they stand seems to have been decided. The majority of Serbs want to join the EU. The president knows that too. But he does not understand European concerns about becoming too financially dependent on Chinese debt. Tell me what's the difference between uh, owing money to Germans and owing money to Chinese or to Americans? Money is money. Okay. It's not marked. Okay. That's so for you, you know it no matter. no not at all because I can tell you there are irresponsible governments. There are irresponsible governments that always ask for some money to get it from somewhere and then they say, Well that's because we owe to Chinese, that's because no, we have to you have to handle, you have to tackle your public finances in a proper way, then you have no problems. We have no problems with public debt. Mm -hmm. Public debt to GDP ratio is the best and the lowest in the region. And we have no problems with public debt at all because we take care of our public finances. Everything is under control and we are the very best place for the investments. That's why German investors are coming in huge numbers to our country.
The Chinese community in Serbia, including Weya, has little interest in these issues. In a bold decision, Weya has left her job with the Chinese entrepreneur on short notice. How do you feel after both of you quit your job right now? We, it's funny to say that we feel wonderful. <laughs> yeah, we feel wonderful. <laughs> I've been planning to open up my own cafe or dessert shop for a really long time, for almost two years. And it's because of the COVID, I couldn't start it like very uh, early. So that's why I decided to quit from this job and then to, I finally found my partner here. And so, yeah, I'm really excited about this. They have an appointment today with a roastery to have their own coffee creation blended. <laughs> You're such a perfectionist. <laughs> Weya is a businesswoman. In her new cafe, she wants to sell a roast that includes Chinese coffee beans. They anxiously await the result. It has a very sour taste. Yeah. At the beginning, it's a bit sour, but at the end, it's very bitter. And you can feel that it's on your tongue. It's very bitter. At the end. They decide on the blend with Chinese notes. Now that they have the coffee, all they need is a space. An agent meeting downtown. Plans for the cafe are becoming more concrete every day. Should we get in? Yes, okay, can. thank you. So uh, basically, we want to open up a cake shop. Do you understand English? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, a cake shop. A cake shop. Yeah. So I was thinking, is this place um, able to be made like a kitchen for a dessert? The property is a bit quirky but they both seem to like it. Rent is 500 euros per month. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So they are here. And what do you think of the price? I think it's quite okay. Yeah, it's okay for, yeah. uh, it's for the space. No, no, no. Weya documents everything for her mother, who will give her the money for the cafe, her wedding dowry which Weya prefers to invest in her passion project. I think I'm most likely I'm going to take this place. I've been looking for so many places and this is the best one that I can find. I need to have a kitchen in my store, so it has to be separated so that I can make sure my cake is made in a safe place and it's all clean and which is just the perfect, perfect, perfect place for us. She is not afraid of the business risk. Everyone knows each other, all the Chinese people in Serbia. So once they know I have a shop here, they will all come and visit. The lease will be signed in a few days. Since 2010, China has drastically increased its investments in Serbia. Chinese corporations have built bridges highways and train lines. Sewage plants and the Belgrade subway are next on the agenda. And while political relations between the two countries are strengthening, so are personal relationships. A wedding is taking place tonight in an exclusive restaurant outside Belgrade. Weya is among the guests. Kit, the art teacher from Block 70, is marrying his Serbian fiance, Jovana. <laughs> he has arrived. <laughs> Today, he is joining the Serbian community. Weya has realized a dream with her own cafe in Serbia. Marriage is a distant prospect for her. But when she does think about getting married, she doesn't want to do it in China. I think it's going to happen here because I'm planning to stay in Serbia for a really long time.
250 kilometers southeast of Belgrade, Bor is coming to life. The cityscape is now distinctly Chinese. Goran Yakovlevich sees how his hometown has changed. He regularly visits the people who live beside the mine at the edge of the pit. They all fear what's coming. How was life here? How? Terrible. What about the dust? Dust, commotion, terrible. When will they resettle you? No idea. Lots of talk and nothing happens. Are the authorities looking after you? They do nothing and say nothing. You're left to fend for yourselves. The excavation destabilizes the ground. Cracks are already showing in many houses. At some point, it could all collapse. These are the losers in the China-Serbia economic arrangement. The family has been waiting for months to be resettled. Soon, they will have to say goodbye to their home.